Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina, servicing the Grand Strand and the PD. And today we're gonna go back to the well and look at another article, same story, where you have a couple that moved to Charleston, South Carolina that found out that they needed to explore the options. The reason we're doing these videos is because much like we talked about in that first video, if you didn't see it, you can find it here, is it's quite possible that some of these folks that decided to move to Charleston did so in the absence of knowledge and the absence of awareness. And so the question is, had they seen a short, concise, practical, and analytical video from a licensed realtor in different areas going over this information, would they have made a different decision? And I bet for the couple that moved to Florence, the answer is yes. Let's see if that could be the case also for you. Now I'm gonna preface this by saying something I did say in the last video, Charleston's a great city. I love Charleston. Culture, just in general, it's just a really nice place. But a lot of our decisions in life are business decisions. That's just the way that it is. That's the nature of economy. That's the nature of finances. And so sometimes we need information to make educated decisions when it comes to that. So I'm going to read you this article. And I'm going to be reading this one today off of my phone. And let's read their story. One couple relocated from Wyoming to South Carolina, but moved after five months due to cost of living and traffic. Morgan and Dawson Mitchell moved to Charleston, South Carolina in March. They planned to stay for a while, but the cost of living made it difficult. They relocated to Mississippi to help build their financial future. Morgan and Dawson Mitchell were sick of the cold when they decided to move to Charleston, South Carolina. The Mitchells are originally from Mississippi, but moved to a small town in Wyoming in 2022. The end of 2023, the couple were ready for their next adventure. After visiting Charleston in January the same year, they decided it would be ideal for their next move. Charleston seemed like a great place to have good weather and move back to the south a little closer to family and friends, Dawson, age 27, said. I love beach towns, Morgan, 28, added. And I was in the wedding and events industry, and that's really, really big in Charleston, which is true. So I was super interested in it. When Morgan was offered a job in the events industry in Charleston in 2023, it seemed like the perfect chance to relocate. Dawson worked as a bartender and server when they arrived in Charleston, and he was hired as an HVAC sales representative three months into their move. But just five months after they relocated, the Mitchells discovered Charleston didn't live up to the hype for them. The Mitchells told Business Insider the cost of living in Charleston almost prevented them from moving there. According to Zillow, the median rent in the city is $2,800, but the Mitchells didn't want a place that cost more than $2,000 a month, so they struggled to find an apartment. That was shocking to us as being from rural areas, Dawson said, adding that it was important to stay within their budget as they knew they could afford a mortgage for less than in, in other areas. Eventually, they found an apartment to sublet on Facebook Marketplace with five months left on its lease for $1,850 a month. It was very much like Let's just do this for five months. If we don't like it, if it doesn't work out, we just don't have to stay. Once they moved to Charleston, the cost of living continued to be a pain point for the Mitchells regarding expenses such as eating out and gas prices. They said that gas was particularly frustrating because they found themselves stuck in the car more than they anticipated. Their rental was just eight miles from the office where Morgan worked, but she said that she spent at least 45 minutes in the car each way to and from her job. It's a very low country, so there's not a whole lot of open land to build new roads and infrastructure, Dawson said. For us, quality time together is really important and we were stuck in the car separate for so long. We had Banjo, our dog, so by the time we made it home, it was like, okay, go take him out, cook dinner, time for bed. All of our free time dwindled, she added. Morgan said that in July, she spent most of her birthday visit to King Street, a major shopping destination in the city, trying to park. I almost gave up. I was just trying to take myself to Sephora for a nice little treat, and... I had to make rounds for 45 minutes trying to find a parking spot. The Mitchells also hoped that moving to Charleston would help them reconnect with Southern culture they'd been missing while they were living in Wyoming, but they said that Charleston didn't feel as Southern as they thought it would. They said that they had a few chances to connect with other Southerners during their time there. Despite life's difficulties in Charleston, the Mitchells tried to prepare them to stay longer term. We did put an offer in on a house and we were really excited to stay there for a couple of years and that fell through. They said that they could have renewed their lease on their rental, but the management company that owned it increased their rent to 22 50 a month, which they weren't willing to pay. The Mitchells couldn't find another apartment under $2,000 that fit their needs. They said that the only options they found were in areas they wouldn't have felt comfortable walking banjo at night. Soon it felt as if they weren't destined to stay in Charleston as they had thought. We love and kind of take pride in the fact that we've bopped around and moved all around and like going on these little adventures, but we did want to be closer to family. His grandparents are getting older. The Mitchells also plan to invest in real estate, but given the cost of living in Charleston, they didn't feel as if they could launch a career there. We started taking all these things as signs and we're like, you know, we have the opportunity to get out and go somewhere cheaper and build our savings. Morgan and Dawson ultimately moved back to Starkville, Mississippi, when their lease expired in Charleston on August the 1st. When the Mitchells spoke to Business Insider, 
They just signed a new lease in Louisville on an apartment that costs thirteen fifty a month, nine hundred dollars less than they would have paid for a similar unit in Charleston. Morgan and Dawson also started new jobs and they moved. Morgan is now a social media manager at a medical facility and Dawson is working remotely as a loan originator. Dawson said the HVAC company he worked for in Charleston offered him a slight raise when he put in his notice, but it wasn't enough to entice them to stay. We just knew that it wasn't the right thing. There they are. Uh, despite moving twice in such a short period, the Mitchell said they have no regrets about their stint in Charleston. I think it was just one of those things that we had to try for ourselves to be able to come back here. Though they can still see themselves moving around throughout their lives, the Mitchells said that they were excited about the financial opportunities returning to Mississippi offered them. We chose to come back to Mississippi because our money will go a little bit further. I'm oh, sorry, we'll go so much further. Uh, we can buy two properties for what half a property in Charleston would cost. We're always going to look back and say what a fun summer we had, but we knew it wasn't long term. They said reflecting on their time in Charleston. So we might as well just come back here and start building our savings the best we can. Remember, she was in the, the wedding industry, event planning, and he was a server and bartender. This city that we're going to look at being one of the most moved to cities in the United States for the last couple of years, just up the road, also would have equaled Charleston in the opportunity for them in those areas. But would it have been cheaper? So we looked at this data in the last video. Let's revisit it here, but let's angle it differently, looking at a different city or group of cities that's just up north of Charleston. The average price per square foot holistically in Charleston is $401. In that last video, we broke it down by market segment. There's a wide range depending on what your budget is in terms of home buying, but an average being $400 per square foot. The median rent currently active in Charleston is actually $3,400. So that's also something to consider. But let's go just up north and let's take a look at Myrtle Beach and Conway. All right. Because, again, with her being an event planner, a wedding planner, with him being a server and bartender, and certainly there'd be no shortage of HVAC opportunities there also. But he was coming in as a server and bartender. I'm telling you that the same opportunities that were afforded them in Charleston would have been afforded in Myrtle Beach also in those areas. Uh, servers in Myrtle Beach make a killing. I mean, there are people that come in just to serve in Myrtle Beach during the summer from different places in the world. But I digress. The average price per square foot in Myrtle Beach, $226 with a median rent of $1980. Significantly cheaper. Now, if you segment the market, just like we did in that last video, even by market segment, even the top 90-day market segment, and these are homes that are over a million dollars for all intents and purposes, some a little bit less, but anything $850,000 and up, the most expensive homes in Myrtle Beach, the average price per square foot for these homes is still $333, which was $400 plus less than what we saw in Charleston for the million dollar and up homes there. The average price per square foot for the top market segment in Myrtle Beach is $333. This is still significantly less than what we saw in Charleston if you go back and look at that previous video. So what about Conway? Conway is 20 miles west of the coast. So you're talking about right literally next door to Myrtle Beach. And you're going to have another drop off, average of $194 per square foot. Median rent about the same, $1,900. And the price per square foot by market segment, all Basically, let's just call it around $200. So when you look at these homes in Charleston and you look at that average price per square foot by market segment, the lowest being $274, up to almost $800, $760 per square foot. And with the top being at an average of $760 per square foot, you're talking about a massive difference in price, whether it's Myrtle Beach or Conway. Like I said, Charleston's a wonderful city. I'm not trying to detract from Charleston or knock them in any way, but it's just the reality is business. I don't service Charleston. But what I'm telling you is that if that same couple saw this video prior to their move, would they have considered making a phone call, whether it be to me or some other real estate agent or somebody they know, whoever? The bottom line is they pick up the phone and they say, hey, tell me about Myrtle Beach. Tell me about Conway because it's right outside of Myrtle Beach. Am I making the right decision here? This article I saw on a Facebook group that I'm a part of. The previous article, somebody sent it to me. These were back to back. If you look at the comments in that Facebook group, a lot of them were along the lines of you need to do your homework before you move. You know, these were people defending Charleston. They're Charleston natives. And they were saying, hey, they should have not moved here if they if they didn't know this. Well, I would agree with that, you know, to an extent. But a lot of times people don't know what to look for. That's why this video exists is significantly cheaper to move to Myrtle Beach. And I'm always going to recommend Conway because it's going to be even cheaper than Myrtle. And there's a little bit less you have to deal with going to Conway. There's some pros and cons. But the bottom line is I would certainly state objectively, regardless of what area I service, from the standpoint of finances 
and even some of the traffic stuff. Myrtle Beach can definitely get hairy, but the way that Myrtle Beach is designed, traffic can be a little bit smoother than what it can than what you're going to find in Charleston. Absolutely, from these standpoints, Myrtle Beach is certainly at least worth the consideration. And so, in an effort to try to prevent you from being the next person that's feeling like I made a bad decision and we're reading an article about you a year from now. We presented this data to try to give you some things to consider. And so if you found it helpful and beneficial, and if you've watched this video up to this point, you're probably considering a move to South Carolina, possibly even specifically Charleston. Let us know down in the comments uh, what your takeaway is. If you can relate to any of this that's being stated, let us know in the comments what you think. But if you did find the video helpful, please give it a like. It helps us out a lot. We really do appreciate it. Now, I am a local licensed realtor servicing these areas, so if you have any other further questions or you feel like you need any assistance moving forward with actually moving into our area, all of my contact information is down in the description. You can reach out to me today. We can set up a complimentary buyer's consultation, and we can explore any of the questions that you have, and I can answer any of them that I'm able to answer for you. I'd be happy to bring my almost 40 years of experience in this area to the table to help you in any way that I can. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found it insightful. I look forward to hearing from you. I wish you all the best in your move. And in the meantime, y'all take care. And God willing, we'll see you on the next video.